detected it originated elsewhere. But We're here to tell you we have detected a rare gas called phosphine in the atmosphere of our neighbor planet, Venus. And the reason for our excitement is that phosphine gas on Earth is made by microorganisms that live in oxygen-free environments. And so there is a chance that we have detected some kind of living organisms in the clouds of Venus. We originated a project in 2016 to see if we could look, deliberately look for phosphine. There is a long-standing theory that some of the smallest forms of life, these microorganisms, might have been able to evolve upwards into the high clouds. So conditions there are certainly not nice. They're extremely acidic and it's very windy. Um, but on the other hand, if you're talking about 50 to 60 kilometers up, um, then the pressure is much like it is at the surface of the earth and the temperature is quite nice, maybe up to about 30 centigrade or 85 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's been hypothesized that this is a living habitat today. Jane and the others probably have to go and talk to other members of the media, so um, they, it's not over for them yet. So we started with the James Clark Maxwell Telescope in Hawaii, which is operated by the East Asia Observatory, and the UK is a long-term member of the other partners there. We also then went on to use the ALMA network of telescopes down in Chile. That's operated by Europe, North America, Japan, and other partners. And so we spent a couple of years trying to work out what chemical processes might produce phosphine at that rate. And to do this, we had to build a network of chemical reactions that could happen in the atmosphere, um, such as down the left-hand side of the screen here, and then predict what the rates through that network would be under Venus conditions. I mean, it's a good question for Jane to answer. What can we observe at radio wavelengths? As Jane and William summarized, we are claiming a confident detection of phosphine gas whose existence is a mystery. And I just want to reiterate what William said, that Phosphine can be produced by some processes on Venus, but only in such incredibly tiny amounts. It's not enough to explain our observation. So we're left with this other exciting, enticing possibility that perhaps there is some kind of life in Venus's clouds. Okay. Uh, Herbert, when you come in again, if you could say uh, you know, who you're writing for or, or reporting. Human, as humans, we have wondered about life beyond Earth for thousands of years. We now know that Nearly all stars have planets, and astronomers have found thousands of exoplanets orbiting nearby stars. We know that rocky planets are common. A generation of astronomers is now working to enable future telescopes, observations, and theory to be able to find signs of life on exoplanets far away by looking for gases in the atmosphere that don't belong. So thank you to everybody, and I guess we'll leave it there. So.